Now, last weekend, the Big Apple spared from a big shot of snow, but there's another potentially more powerful system that could be on the way. And when we start to see a chance for a storm, we start to look for our checklist, right? The several key ingredients that are needed to produce a nor'easter. Over the weekend, we really didn't have it. But this one, Tom Nizzle here in the lab, this one looks a little different. We may have almost all the ingredients on the checklist. Yeah, we're really going to dissect this. We're so many weather savvy people that watch the show that we're going to get into what makes a nor'easter. So let's go right ahead and start with some of our ingredients. The first is the upper level trough and ridge combination. There's the big ridge on the west coast of North America and the trough. This helps to develop these systems as they come into the base of the trough and off the southeast coast. Do we have it in this system? Yeah, for this upcoming storm system? Yes, so go ahead okay. and check that. All right, now let's go to our next feature here. And as these move along the jet stream here, we oftentimes will have an upper level jet streak, an area of very strong winds. The jet streak feature is adjusting in the atmosphere, and as it does, we end up producing a lot of energy or lift in the left front exit region of this jet. I know that's technical, but what that does is it helps to intensify the storm as it comes off the coast. So with and the positioning of the winds in this upcoming setup for Friday into Saturday, do we have a jet streak in the right spot? Very favorable, so we're going to have to check that as well. We'll go to our next feature here. The next feature is the low-level jet. Once the system gets off the coast, up around 5,000 feet in the atmosphere, we have a low-level jet that comes off the Atlantic Ocean, often very strong. A lot of moisture coming in here. The lift creates more intensification in this low, and this brings a lot of precipitation back into the cold air. Guess what? I'm pretty sure we've got that one. <laughs> yes, we do. We have that as well. So three for three. We go to our next feature. Our next feature, very simple. We didn't have it last weekend, but a big high sitting across the northeast here will ensure that cold air comes down into the system and produces snow in this quarter. And guess what, Mark? We also have that, so too. So the big missing ingredient last week may have been the position of the high. Certainly was in this for a case, number of reasons. We've got the high pushing in cold air. And that high will help to slow this system down in its forward movement, which means an extended period of snow. So our next feature, and this is an interesting feature with this type of setup, it's always there. It is the topography. The Appalachian Mountains here allow this cold air to come down on the east side of the mountain and stay here and settle in here. Cold air damming is what we talk about with this. We also have along the coast here, cold air on land, warm ocean water here in the Gulf Stream. That produces a boundary in here and that also is favorable for more deepening of the low. In this case coming up, the ocean departures from average seem to be even higher. Is this potentially something that could even enhance that coastal boundary? It's a very good point. The ocean temperatures are running some four to six degrees above normal in this area. So yes, absolutely check that baby off as well. Now our next feature here is going to be, uh, this is interesting, because these ocean temperatures are so warm here, there is a lot of heat coming off the ocean, rising into the atmosphere, and all of that heat and moisture makes for more energy and the potential for more precipitation coming in around this so, uh, low. So sensible and latent heat flux is a technical term. We have that as well. And finally, when all of this moisture gets lifted into the atmosphere and produces the precipitation, and back behind this line it would be snow, there's a huge release of heat in the atmosphere from that process. It's called latent heating. And latent heating will also help to very rapidly intensify the snow. So we're going to check that off as well. It is a positive feedback mechanism. All these factors go into producing the nor'easter. So it looks like we are filling out this list. We're going to have to watch these qualifies as we go through the rest as of the week. As we get into the end of the week. That's and correct. hey, a classic question about a nor'easter. We want to hear from you. Use yeah. the hashtag WUTV and we'll answer them here on the show. The late start to winter.